rest of my colleagues up here have said, the rule of law is something that's been handed down for years and years around the world and is a linchpin to the great momentum that was started by conservative leaders throughout the world in the 1980s. And it was 28 years ago that Ronald Reagan went to Berlin and made his famous speech and said to Mr. Gorbachev, tear down the wall. And he did. And that, that led to a great birth of democracy throughout Eastern Europe, Central Asia, and around the world, and to the expansion of the international economy. But there had to come something in behind it to help it stick. And that was supposed to be and should be the rule of law. It's very simple. As Joel said, life, liberty, the right to, the right to property, it gives people the incentive to build and improve their lives and have something to live for. Uh, instead, what has happened and what you're seeing throughout many nations and many so-called democracies is the hijacking of the rule of law. The system is being used against the very people it is supposed to help. And it is being done with the belief that there will be a presumption of regularity because a country's prosecutor or minister of justice levels charges against somebody, there must be something to it. Accuse somebody of money laundering and they become a pariah. Accuse them of tax evasion and they become a bad person. What you've seen in the Ukraine over the last couple decades, it's become almost a political tradition. The party that wins power, the first thing they do is they have the new procurator indict on criminal charges 10, 12, 14 of the leaders of the opposition. And then they release the members of their party that had been charged by the previous opposition party that was controlling the country. It's become a formula. You can watch it. What gets lost in the wayside is the economy, is the growth. The influx, you don't see the influx of investment and you see the outflow of capital. One of the worst examples, and as it was said before, I spent 12 years representing Mikhail Khodorkovsky in Russia. In 2003, Yukos Oil Company was the most profitable company traded on the Russian Stock Exchange. 15% of it was owned by foreign investors. There were two major U.S. oil companies looking to invest in Yukos Oil. It would have been the largest financial transaction in the history of the world. Russia was expanding, the economy was growing. But instead of this moving forward, in, in, 19, in 2003, Mikhail Khodorkovsky found himself thrown in jail, charged with tax evasion, and the, the Russian government announced a re-audit of Yukos Oil Company, the largest taxpayer in the country, to find out that it had underpaid its taxes. Two years later, Yukos was gone, it was, the person, it was now owned by the state-owned oil company. Yukos, which was an incredibly profitable company, with the same assets going to the state-owned oil company, now all of a sudden ran a deficit, and you didn't have to figure out, you didn't have to wonder long where the money was going. In, uh, a couple of years later, Bill Browder, who was the operator of the largest Western hedge fund in Russia, found himself denied access to Russia. His hedge fund was confiscated, again, phony tax charges. The real irony there was Browder got in trouble because he outed some corrupt officials for trying to file phony tax charges using some of his corporate entities. Unfortunately, uh, Brow and where a lot of people have heard about Browder's case was his lawyer, Sergei Magnitsky, was arrested, thrown in jail, and died 30 days later because he refused to provide evidence against his boss. So we see, and, and there, are, there are other incidents in Russia. I don't want to just pick on Russia. I've mentioned Ukraine. Uh, this goes on, and what you see is, again, as I said, instead of the rule of law protecting the growth of these countries under the guise of enforcing the law, personal property is being taken away on a regular basis. The fact that the upper levels of 
the administration in these countries are able to engage in these practices leads to even more rampant corruption at the lower levels of the government. I'll go back to Russia. There was a major hotel project. If any of you went around 2010, you saw a big hole in the ground very near the Kremlin. It was going to build the largest hotel in Russia called the Moscow Hotel. One day, the senior, uh, the senior developer of that project had some visitors who came. They were friends of the administration. He was introduced to his new partner. He was held at gunpoint while his brother flew to Cyprus to sign papers that would try to create the appearance of legality. When they tried to resist, he was charged, with criminal, he was charged criminally in Russia and forced to flee the country. He was sitting in my office talking to me about some of his rights and what would be done to fight back when he got a phone call and the look on his face was something I'll never forget. His brother-in-law had been approached by law enforcement to find out where he was in the United States. And when he refused to cooperate, uh, two days later, he was found slumped over the, the, the uh, steering wheel of his car with two bullet holes in the back of his head. It's a very clear message. And people get that message. And as a result today, part of what you see, one of Russia's problems is besides the capital leaving the country, the human capital that's leaving the country. Because why would young people who watched the fall of the Soviet Union and who saw the opportunity that was unfolding in front of them, why should they stay? The country isn't growing, and it's very depressing to go there. You go at election time, and in America, we get all geared up for elections. There's nothing America likes more than elections. Because we believe that we can control the destiny of our lives. We think that our vote matters and it can change things. The same thing over here in Israel with the most recent election of President Netanyahu. It was followed all over the world. Americans loved it. American pollsters came here to work on the election. But in Russia, if you talk to somebody two months before the election, they don't care. They see absolutely no connection between electing somebody to office and anything that impacts their life anymore. And that's really sad. And, part, and a significant part of it comes back to the failure to adhere to the rule of law. And it's getting worse because they're exporting that. They're exporting it to the rest of the world. Russia has a tremendous amount of influence over Armenia. And an outgrowth of the Yukos case was a case that came to Armenia. It was litigated in Armenia, and a judge made the unfortunate choice to rule in favor of the Yukos-related company. He was called into his office on a Sunday. He was confronted by senior justices and the head of the, procurators, the prosecutor's office. He was handed a thumb drive with his new decision on it. And he went into court the next day and reversed himself and issued the new decision. Not satisfied with that, he was then fired. His pension was taken away. This judge had the courage to come forward. This judge had the courage to come forward and speak publicly about what he did. His name is Sir Grizarian. He's now living in the United States with political asylum. He went and testified against the Russian government in, the case, in one of the cases involving Yukos against the Russian authorities. And it, but it took a lot of courage to come forward. But he wanted to stand up for the rule of law. He, he realized he came out of a system where it didn't necessarily flourish. But there came a point in time where he saw what was happening and he needed to do it. The rule of law makes a difference. If democracy is going to work, if people are going to control their lives, they have to have something. They have to have a basic set of rules. And that's being hijacked. And hopefully by coming here today and speaking in Israel, which is the bastion for democracy in the Middle East, and that does follow the rule of law, it can help spread the message that it should be adhered to elsewhere and we can follow on the momentum that was created by a lot of great leaders in the last century. Thank you.